heavy versus light. By itself is a steel LS1 flywheel. Does flywheel and drive plate weight actually make a difference? Does it make more power? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder. I'm at West Tech Performance. I've got a 4.8 liter up on the dyno, just begging for more dyno testing. And here's the question for today. Have you ever tried to pick up a flywheel? They're seriously heavy. But we don't think twice about asking our motor to accelerate this big heavy flywheel every time we step on the gas. My question is this, what happens if we install a light flywheel. I can tell you this, it's a lot easier to pick up, but does it add any power? Is a lightweight flywheel, like maybe an aluminum flywheel and even a lightweight like clutch assembly, is that worth any power? Well, here's how I'm gonna find out. We've got our 4.8 liter up on the dyno. We're gonna run it on the engine dyno. Right now it's configured with your kind of your standard. This is the flywheel that we use all the time for testing. It is a heavy steel LS1 flywheel. And then we have a steel drive plate. So we've got a combination of steel on steel there. We're gonna run it and tune it optimize the tune, make sure the power is nice and repeatable, and then we'll go ahead and pull it off the dyno and we'll change it for lightweight components. We've got a lighter flywheel and then we've got a lighter aluminum drive plate. We'll put those on, we'll run it again and find out first, do we have to tune it? Did it change any of that? But most probably, is it going to change the power output? Will the lightweight components actually show on the dyno and allow this motor to make more power? So let's get this thing up and running, get it tuned, and then swap those components. Let's take a look at our 4.8 liter test motor. Starting with the Junkyard 4.8 liter LR4. Mods included a Truck Norris NSR cam and a Holley High Ram. On with the High Ram. Okay, we've got our High Ram on. So we've got our O-ring in here. Got our bolts on. Now it's time to install the fuel rails and then the lid. We started with a steel flywheel and matching steel drive plate, then installed it up on the dyno. Before we run our comparison on the dyno, let's put the flywheel and flex plate up on the scale and find out what they weigh. All right, let's see how much the flywheel weighs by itself. This is a steel LS1 flywheel. 23.92. Now let's see what happens when we install the drive plate on it. Okay, we've got the drive plate on there. A hefty 45.02, so 45 pounds between the steel drive plate and the steel flywheel. So by contrast, the stock flex plate is a featherweight, 5.5 pounds. So we'll see what happens when we add our drive plate.
Okay, guys, before we get to the results of our comparison of the heavy flywheel and drive plate versus the light flex plate and drive plate, we need to understand why there would even be a change to begin with. And it's something called moment of inertia. And the definition of moment of inertia is the torque needed for angular acceleration. And what they mean by that is basically it takes a given amount of force to accelerate a given mass. In our case, we're talking about a flywheel and or flex plate, and we're having to spin that heavy flywheel. And it's very important to understand why there would be a change in power, or at least we would see that measured on the dyno. And if we take a look, I'm gonna go ahead and put the very simplified formula up for the change in moment of inertia. And inertia equals mass times the radius squared. So if we take a look at that, Here's the takeaway. I don't want to get too heavy into the math. In fact, there are a number of different formulas for this, depending on what you're actually trying to measure. But if we take a look at this, basically it, it the moment of inertia is a function of the weight of the thing that you're trying to accelerate and then how big the thing is you're trying to accelerate. But please notice that in this formula, the mass or the weight is not as important actually as the diameter or the radius squared in this case. So when you change the diameter or the size of the thing that you're trying to accelerate, it makes more of a difference than the actual weight is. So if we look at the four different possible combinations for moment of inertia, and we're keeping in mind our flywheel and drive plate assembly, the ideal thing is to have, according to this formula for moment of inertia, is to have a very light flywheel or flex plate and a very small diameter flywheel and flex plate. That's the optimum combination. And this is the combination we see for the small little tilt and clutches on Formula One race cars or other kinds of road race cars that change, that want to change, you know, the rate of acceleration. And they're constantly changing RPM in these motors. And it's, and it works very well. The other thing that does is, is as we change the weight of the flywheel and that type of assembly, we're also taking total weight off of the vehicle. And that works also very well to improve everything. It improves acceleration, it improves braking, it improves handling, it improves all the things. So less weight is usually better. So of the four combinations, small diameter and lightweight, number one. So the next one actually is small diameter. And if you're going to make it heavier, keep it small. So as I said, the change in diameter has more of an effective moment of inertia. So we'd see a bigger change from going to a bigger diameter than we would be to change the weight. So keep it small if you're going to make it heavy. The next combination that you might wanna have would be if you are going to a larger diameter, keep the weight down. If you're gonna put a big, you know, a big large diameter flywheel or flex plate in there, make sure that it's light. And then the final combination that you would want or not want in this case is you don't want it to be both big and heavy because if it's big and heavy, that's two strikes against you. So let's take a look and see what happened when we changed the weight of our flywheel. In this case, we went from a heavy steel flywheel designed for an LS1, the one that we use on all of our testing at West Tech, and then a steel flywheel, which we honestly don't use that often unless it's a real, real high horsepower deal. And we compare that to a simple LS flex plate that we get off of our all of our junkyard motors that we get from the wrecking yard. And then we also put a aluminum drive hub on this. And please note that in addition to the aluminum being lighter than the steel drive hub, it's also smaller in diameter. So not only do we change the weight of the total combination, we also change the diameter, at least in the case of the drive plate. So how much power was it all worth? Let's find out. Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth to figure out how much power, if any, the change in flywheel and drive plate weight made in our testing. And as I have said many times, what we did, what we did was take our 4.8 liter, put it up on the dyno. We ran it first with the steel flywheel and steel drive plate. And then all we did was unbolt it from the dyno basically remove that assembly, put on a flex plate, and then put on an aluminum drive plate that was both lighter weight and smaller in diameter. We, we had a total weight change in that adjustment, in that upgrade. We went from basically 45 pounds of rotational weight down to 16 pounds because the flex plate was about five and a half pounds and then we had 11 pounds and change i think on the um on the drive plate so big change in weight and this is the associated change in power by making that change on the dyno this was our combination with the 48 long tube headers had the high ram on it 105 millimeter throttle body 80 pound injectors and had the brian Tooley 
uh, truck Norris, no springs required camshaft in it. Otherwise, it was an LR4, even a high mileage, well used LR4. But the combination produced 404 horsepower, which is really good power for this particular combination. And peak torque checked in at 347.9. So we'll call that 348 foot pounds of torque. And that was with the heavy flywheel assembly. Here's what happened when we put the lightweight assembly on there the flex plate and then the aluminum drive plate. You can see we did indeed pick up power. In fact, we picked up power basically every way through the curve. Not very much on the initial start on the load in, but definitely power all the way through the curve. Peak power checked in at 411 horsepower. So we, we picked up about seven horsepower, which is good. And on torque production, peak torque was up to 354.6 foot pounds or 355 foot pounds. So we, we did get a little bit of extra torque. We kind of got a power gain all the way through the RPM range. And please note, this is, <laughs> this is interesting. We're seeing this and this is not on an inertia dyno. The, if you take a look at an inertia dyno, like a, a dyno jet or, or, these kinds of um, chassis dyno, inertia dynos, you'll see a greater change from changes in moment of inertia. We see this from the testing that I've done time and time again on different size wheel and tire packages, and you could see it to a lesser extent on things like um, drive shafts and things. But we did see it here on the flywheel, uh, lightweight flywheel assembly. So if you put a lightweight flywheel assembly on there, you definitely will see a change in acceleration. On the engine dyno, basically what we're doing is we have a fixed acceleration rate. So we're running at three RPM per second. That's what the dyno's programmed to, and we still see this kind of change in power. So <laughs> my recommendation, put lightweight, fly, lightweight flywheels and drive plates, especially on road race cars. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.